In one big city, two poor children lived in the neighborhood Kai and Gerda, who loved each other like brother and sister. Parents allowed them to walk to each other on the roof to visit and sit on a bench under the roses. In the warm season, they spent all their time here, inventing different games, and in the winter they loved to sit by the warm hearth and listen to amazing stories that their grandmother often told them. Once, when the children were looking at a picture book, Kai felt something prick him in the eye and heart these were the fragments of the mirror of the powerful lady the Snow Queen. Since then, the boy's behavior has changed dramatically he became angry, rude and cruel. One day, Kai went to bargaining and never returned. When Gerda found out about Kai's disappearance, she cried for a long time. But she was sure that Kai was alive, so she decided to go in search of him. For a long time Gerda walked through the forests, through the fields, and then she came across a wonderful house, buried in flowers. The hostess came out to her it was an old, old sorceress in a large straw hat. The old woman really liked Gerda, and therefore she bewitched the poor girl and left her with her forever. Gerda forgot about the purpose of her journey and spent a lot of time playing in the wonderful garden of the hospitable hostess. Once she accidentally saw a rose and remembered Kai, and immediately waking up from the magic, went on the road. On the way, Gerda met a big smart raven. He told the girl that he knew a princess who was about to get married, and her fiancé looked very much like Kai. The raven agreed to take Gerda to him. Once in the palace, Gerda managed to see the future prince unfortunately, it was not Kai. The princess, having heard the sad story of the girl, presented her with a golden carriage with a coachman and servants, as well as shoes, a muff and a wonderful dress. And Gerda hit the road. In the dark forest, the sparkling carriage immediately caught the eye of the robbers, who immediately attacked it. The robber took Gerda prisoner. She took Gerda to the robber's castle to show off her menagerie, which contained forest pigeons and reindeer from Lapland. Hearing the story of her captive, the robber took pity on her and released her along with the reindeer in search of Kai. The reindeer brought the girl to the old Lapland woman, who warmed and fed the exhausted girl. She wrote a few words on a dried cod to her friend Finn, who lived near the Snow Queen's palace, asking to help the girl. She explained to Gerda that the reason for Kai's bad behavior was the fragments of the mirror that hit his heart and eyes, and he would never be the same if the ice was not melted by the power of a warm loving heart. Gerda went to the palace of the Snow Queen alone no one dared approach the house of the powerful mistress. She was very cold and scared. Finding herself in the castle, Gerda was surprised how cold, deserted and dead he was. Soon she noticed Kai, who turned completely blue, almost blackened from the cold. The boy sat in a corner and tried to lay out the word eternity from the ice flows, because in this case he would have received the whole world and a pair of new skates as a gift from the Snow Queen. Gerda rushed to Kai, hugged him tightly and cried. With her hot tears, she melted the splinter stuck in the boy's heart. Having picked up, Kai also began to cry, and the second shard flowed out of his eyes along with tears. How happy they were to see each other. But there was no time for joy. They had to get out of the ice palace before the Snow Queen returned. When Kai and Gerda finally got out of the kingdom of the Snow Queen, they hurried home. On the way back, they met all the friends who helped Gerda in her search. 
At home, their favorite blooming roses were waiting for them, and everything that happened was soon forgotten by them, like a heavy dream. There lived a husband and wife. For a long time they already wanted to have a child, but he was not there. One day, my wife fell ill. The husband asked her what she wants the most. The wife replied that there was a magnificent garden nearby, where many of the most beautiful flowers grow. There is a beautiful Rapunzel in the garden. It looks so fresh and so green that she really wanted to taste it. But the garden was surrounded by a high fence, and no one dared to enter it, since this garden belonged to one witch. She possessed great power, and everyone in the world feared her. The husband loved his wife very much, and decided to get a Rapunzel for her, no matter what it cost him. And so at dusk he climbed over the stone fence into the sorceress's garden, in a hurry picked up a whole handful of green Rapunzel, and brought it to his wife. She immediately made herself a salad from it, and ate greedily. She liked this salad so much that the next day she wanted even more than before. The husband made his way into the garden again, but the witch was already standing in front of him. She glared at him angrily and said that he would pay a lot for stealing the Rapunzel. He asked the witch not to be angry, because he tore off the Rapunzel for his wife, who was very ill. And he loves her so much. Okay. The witch's anger passed a little, and she said that if it was true, she would allow him to collect as much Rapunzel as he wanted, but on one condition. He will have to give the witch the child okay, who will okay. be born to his wife. The husband agreed with fear. When the wife gave birth to a daughter, the witch immediately appeared, took the child with her, and named her Rapunzel. Rapunzel became the most beautiful girl in the world. When she was 12 years old, the witch locked her in a tower. That tower was in the forest, and it had no doors or stairs. Only at the very top was a small window. When the witch wanted to climb the tower, she called Rapunzel to pull her sides down. And Rapunzel had long, beautiful hair. She hears the voice of the witch, loosens her braids, ties them up to the window hook, and the hair falls down, and the witch then climbs up, clinging to them. Several years passed, and the king's son happened to ride a horse through the forest where the tower stood. Suddenly he heard singing, and it was so pleasant that he stopped and began to listen. Rapunzel sang it in her wonderful voice. The prince wanted to climb up. He began to look for the entrance to the tower, but it was impossible to find him. He once saw how the witch climbs up the braids that Rapunzel lowered her. And the next day, when it was already getting dark, the prince drove up to the tower and called Rapunzel. She heard, pulled her braids down, and the prince climbed up. Rapunzel, seeing that a man she had never seen came to her, was very frightened at first. But the prince spoke to her affectionately and said that his heart was so touched by the singing that he decided to see her without fail. Then Rapunzel ceased to be afraid, and when he asked if she agreed to marry him, she gave her consent and held out her hand to him. But they just did not know how to go down together. They figured out that when the prince came, he would always take a piece of silk with him, and Rapunzel would weave a ladder out of it. And when the ladder is ready, they will go down it together and leave. The sorceress did not notice anything until one day Rapunzel asked why it is easier to drag the prince up. The sorceress understood everything, got angry and clutched in rage at Rapunzel's beautiful hair. I wrapped them around my left arm several times and with my right grabbed the scissors and cut them off. 
She took the sorceress into the dense thicket of Rapunzel and hid her there. She tied the severed braids to the window hook, and when the prince appeared, she pulled them down. The oh, no. prince climbed up and saw the witch. She looked at him with her malicious look and said that he would never see Rapunzel. The king's son was beside himself with grief and jumped out of the tower in despair, but the thorny thorns of the bushes, on which he fell, gouged out his eyes. The blind prince wandered for several years in grief and sorrow through the forest, all the time grieving and crying for his beloved lost. Once he went into a dense thicket. Suddenly the prince heard someone singing, it seemed so familiar to him, and he went to meet him. When he came closer, Rapunzel recognized him, threw herself on his neck and cried bitterly with joy. Two tears fell in his eyes, and the prince regained his sight and began to see as before. He brought her to his kingdom, and they lived for many, many years in happiness and joy.